American tulip wood is one of my favorite types of wood to use. It's really soft and it's readily available around here. I'm just going to call it poplar from now on because that's what everybody seems to call it. But it's really pleasant to work with. It's easy to sand and takes paint really well. Usually the coloration of poplar has a whitish sort of tan and it's mixed with this greenish sort of tone. But every once in a while I get these bizarre pieces that are caused by the mineral deposits inside the wood. When I find one of these oddball colored pieces, I set them aside until I come up with something good to use them for. I'm going to use this one for a strange piece of wall art in this project. It's pretty simple and I think you'll like it. The inspiration for this project came from this old drawing that I found in my stack of ideas over there. It looks a little more complicated than it is. I made this prototype out of cardboard and pins and thread. In the finished version though, my pretty piece of wood that I turn into a plaque will take the place of the cardboard. And instead of the pins, I'm going to use these copper nails. I haven't decided which type yet. And in place of the thread, I'm going to use 24 gauge copper wire. Using a simple chart like this can help you break down the design to make it a little easier to understand. All you really have to do to make this design is make four of these. You just connect the one to the one, the two to the two, and so on. Here's the design completed, and you can see that it's not that complicated when you break it down. We'll just have to replace the numbers with pins and the lines with copper wire. One of my favorite ways to make a wooden circle easily is to just draw with a compass the size of your circle and then cut it out roughly with a jigsaw. Then later I touch up around the edges with a disc sander. If what you're building requires a more perfect circle, you might want to consider using a router instead. I have a video on making a wooden bearing that goes over explicitly how to make a wooden circle very accurately. But for our purposes, a jigsaw and a disc sander will be just fine. <laughs> I would like to make the edge of my plaque a little more decorative, so I'm going to use this router table and route this shape into it. A router table is essentially just an upside down router that sinks into the table. Since this bit has a bearing on it, we can just run the piece right against the bearing and it'll make a perfect route for us. There's no reason to set up a fence or anything with the router table. Now I'm going to use this chamfering bit to put a little bit of a 45 on the back side. Next I'm going to use this keyhole bit. It'll make a nice simple way to hang it. I'll show you how it works as soon as I'm done routing. Now I just stick a screw in the wall and it hangs nice and securely. Now that I'm done shaping my plaque, it's time to sand it. Then I'm going to hit it with a coat of lacquer to make it nice and shiny. After a couple coats of lacquer, it's starting to look pretty good. For this next part, you want to imagine what plum will be on the front side. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but put a piece of masking tape where you think level will be. Find the little needle hole left by your compass for this next step. Make sure it's visible. Here's a previous piece of wall art that I made. It's just a wooden spiral on a painted burlap background. But really I'm just here because I need to use its screw. Now that it's settled to where it wants to be, I'm going to use a level to draw a plumb line right down the midpoint of the circle. 
Now I'm pretty much guaranteed that my wall art is going to hang nice and plumb. At this point it's time to lay out the points for where the nails are going to go. I chose to use 8 and space them out so they end a quarter inch away from the, where the round over starts. You only have to do it on one part. Then you can use a compass to transfer that point to the other three sections. Once you've transferred your outermost point to the top, you can use those two points to, de to define a perfectly perpendicular line. Of course you can use a framing square too, but this way is probably a little more precise. Just make a random arc near the edge and start the compass from both of those outer points. Where these two arcs intersect will form a perfectly perpendicular line through your midpoint. Now use the compass to transfer the remaining points to the other three line segments. Once you've used your compass to transfer all the other points around, use a needle tool like this to mark through the masking tape so you know where to put your nails later. This is just a piece of coat hanger sharpened on the lathe. Before I started to put the nails in, I gave it one final sanding with 600 grit. I'm using a 3 8 brass bar to make sure all the heights of my nails are uniform. I usually prefer polyurethane for my wooden projects. In this case, I used lacquer because I want to coat the copper to discourage it from oxidizing when I'm done. Some people find oxidized copper as desirable, and they call it a patina finish. But I'm not interested in that for this project. I want it to be shiny. That's why I'm wearing the latex gloves. Each pass that I make goes around four nails. So the length of my pieces are always going to be the same. So far it's not being as difficult as I had anticipated. Each string is just four nails I'm keeping them as high up as I can to give the piece as much depth as possible. And this is my final string. Unless I decide to put one down the center. Running a wire down the middle definitely turned out to be the trickiest part. Now I'm just going to hit it with a coat or two of lacquer to finish it off and to ensure that the copper doesn't start to oxidize. I hope you enjoyed the project. Thanks a lot for watching.